But today I'm going to show you how to set up an aquarium ready to look after tadpoles and keep them until they grow into little frogs. So what you're going to need for this is a tank, some gravel and some plants. First thing we need to do is wash this gravel to make sure it's nice and clean. You also need to make sure that the tank you're using is nice and clean. So let's go and do that. Okay, so now we've got our clean gravel. We basically did this by running the gravel under the tap uh, through a sieve so that all the dust that's on the gravel gets washed off. So now what we can do is put this gravel into the tank. Now because this tank's going to be for tadpoles and frogs, what I want to do is to bank up the side so that we have an area up the top which is outside of the water and an area up down here which is going to be underneath the water. Okay, so now we've got it arranged quite nicely. So we have a nice high bank up here and a slope down into this area here which will be underneath the water. So the water line can be up to about here. All this bit will be under the water for the tadpoles and when they need to start to come out, They've got this area up here which will, they can actually get out of the water. All we can do is, as we first set it up, the tadpoles are going to be the only things in the tank, so we're going to have a higher water level, and as they start to change, we can lower the water level ready for them. That's something we can do as we go along. But what we're going to need to do now is to put in our plants into the aquarium. Okay, these plants will provide the oxygen in the water for the tadpoles and they provide hiding places and also algae which will grow on the leaves will also be what the tadpoles will feed on. So next up we're going to need to put in some water. Um, the chlorine in normal tap water will kill tadpoles so um, you don't want to use tap water. Rain water is excellent, bottled water that doesn't have any chlorine in, distilled water is also suitable. Uh, if you do use tap water you need to leave it for a couple of days if you leave it, then the chlorine will leach out of the water and then it will be perfectly safe to use. So that's what we're going to do today. Because our tadpoles aren't ready to hatch yet, we can fill this up with water, uh, normal tap water, and by the time the tadpoles are ready, this water will be perfectly safe to use. Okay, so now we've got the water in. I've taken out one of the plants I had in there because there is too much for this small tank. But these two plants should be great. There's plenty of hiding spaces. The water is a little bit above this level, but then when the tadpoles start to change and more want to come out, we can easily lower that level to just below here so that there's actually somewhere for them to come out with. So in this tank at the moment, there are four litres of water. Now, a good rule of thumb is for every litre of water, you can have two or three tadpoles in there. So um, 8 to 10 tadpoles should be a good number for this side. This is a 12 litre tank, but we've only put in 4 litres of water there. So there are a few things you need to remember if you want to look after tadpoles. Uh, please make sure that in, uh, in your country, in your region, that it is legal for you to take tadpoles out of the wild and to look after in the tank. In the UK, it's absolutely fine. In other countries, there are regulations against it. Some uh, frog species are pests and they don't want to be encouraged. Some are endangered species and don't want to risk them dying and actually interrupting the ecosystem. Uh, so please make sure of your local regulations. And now um, in this series I'm going to be using the UK uh, common frog, or European common frog, which is found all over Europe and UK and Ireland. And that's absolutely fine to take those in. If you do take tadpoles out of the pond, you must uh, put them back into the same pond when it's time to come to release them. Uh, also, never transfer tadpoles or frog spawn or frogs from one pond to another, as that can transfer diseases. So once you have your tadpoles in the tank, uh, you need to be able to feed them. Now, to begin with, they won't need a lot of feeding. They will eat algae, which is growing on the plants and the size of the tanks. When they get a little bit bigger, you'll need to give them extra food. 
Spinach is a really good food for tadpoles, as is romaine lettuce. Uh, what you need to do is to boil a leaf for just a few seconds, dip it into boiling water just to soften it up, because tadpoles only have very small mouths and uh, it's very difficult for them to chew. So a nice soft leaf, just boil it for a few seconds, then cut it up into very small pieces and float on the top of the tank. And they'll really enjoy that, they'll like, swim up the top and they'll nibble the edge of the leaves and eat it that way. When they get a little bit bigger and they start to grow back legs, they will then become carnivorous and they will need some extra food. At this point you can feed them bloodworm or brine shrimp, something you can get from the local pet store. They normally come in little packets so you can just squeeze out a few blobs and they'll eat that as a really good source of protein for them. When they start coming out of this little froglets and they start leaving the water, they will then need to eat live food. Frogs don't eat things that are dead or stay still. Their vision is very based on movement and they will only go for things if they see them move, so there has to be live. So a good source of live food is aphids. Uh, a really good thing you can do is if you have plants out uh, in your garden that are infested with aphids, you can snip off a little uh, leaf and um, stick it in the top and they will just nibble the, the aphids. Uh, when they get a little bit bigger, you'll need something a bit bigger like uh, first or second star crickets and you can just pop a few in the tank and they will go for those. Other things like mealworms and things, uh, although they can be a little bit big. If you're not comfortable with feeding them live food, that's the time to release them back into the pond where you got them from. Uh, but if you are comfortable, you can keep them a little bit longer. Unfortunately, common frogs do not make good pets as adults. They never learn that the glass is a barrier and they will jump and they can hurt themselves by crashing into the sides of the tank. You do also need to make sure you have a lid on because they are very good at climbing. Tree frogs are extremely good at climbing up the side of the glass, but even the common frogs can do that as well. Uh, I have had a few escapees in past years. So make sure you have a lid over the top so they can't get out. When you do feed them, make sure you remove any leftover food that hasn't been eaten after a few hours, uh, because that can make your water go dirty and it makes cleaning it a lot harder. Uh, to clean them, all you can do is uh, you can remove a little bit of the water and replace it with fresh distilled water, or if you have to use tap water, you can get treatments, tablets or drops you can put in from a pet shop uh, which will make the water safe. Now tadpoles can become cannibals if you don't feed them enough. So they will start eating each other if they begin to get hungry. So if you don't want that to happen, make sure you give them regular food. Okay, I think that about covers everything we need to at the moment. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section and I will make sure I answer every single one. This tank is pretty much ready to go. We're going to leave it a little while for the water to settle down. Um, all we need now are some tadpoles, but unfortunately they haven't hatched yet. So we're going to have to wait maybe next week, maybe the week after, and uh, we can put them in and we can start watching them grow. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do put any questions or comments you have down in the comment section below. And I will, I will definitely make sure I answer any questions. If there's something I haven't covered in this video, please feel free to ask. If you are following along with this series and doing this at home, make sure you tweet me at Shredded Science. I would love to see some pictures of your setup and how you're doing it. And I'd like to see follow your progress as well. If you did enjoy this video, please let me know by leaving a like and make sure you subscribe so you can continue following this series over the coming months. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time here on Frog Watch. Goodbye.